two months ago. Two months? Oh god, I really need to start editing. Also, I wear a suit now. Hello, and welcome back to Kenshin. It's been a little while since the last video, so we're gonna waste no time in jumping straight back into it. Since it's been so long, here's a quick recap. Clearly, you guys are all very eager to find out what happens next. And I know what you're wondering. Is Beep dead? No. But he is busy doing what he does best. Breaking rocks and playing Donkey Konga for the GameCube inside yet another slave camp. What is he like? Aww. Beep is also joined by a now emaciated Molly, as well as two absolute D-list characters, Lara and Spy. And once again, I know what you're wondering. How did we get into this situation? Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I ended up in this situation. After the end of the last video, my numbers were down by a lot. Those who were lucky enough to survive were either taken into heft and enslaved, or were able to make their way out with heavy injuries. Shira Shunthole and Gorilla Gordon found themselves in the latter group. Also, if you're a green fan, you'll be pleased to know he's okay. <coughs> And so I sent the remaining non-dead, non-enslaved survivors back to my fort to act as a temporary daycare, while I freed the remaining four from slavery. I set them to and make hashish, and left them to manage themselves. And back at the slave fort, I scrounged together the squad and broke my way out. Easy. But the fight isn't over for these four. You see, I've been learning, evolving, and adapting after some of the feedback left about my horrendous strategies. Clearly, my head-on approach to taking on the United Cities wasn't working. I needed to think bigger, more logically, like a grand chess master. One commenter mentioned that capturing or killing the leader of the slave farm, Slave Mistress Wren, would cut off the food supply to heft, leaving them in a much weaker, malnourished state. And so I took a look at the Kenshi wiki, and sure enough, it's true. And with Teko... Teko? Taiko and dishcloth still trapped inside the farm, taking over would kill two birds with one stone. Pretty good. Here's the thing, with only four of us versus the whole slave farm, our chances weren't looking good. Luckily though, Gut is just over here. But what's so special about this fucked up blue goo land? Well, it's home to lots and lots of beak things. We rounded up some beak things and led them back to the slave farm, where we began our proxy war. During the chaos, we snuck inside and freed our chums and battered some of the chavs hanging around who weren't busy fighting the local wildlife. Next, it was time for my favorite activity, home invasion. We casually let ourselves into Ren's home and after dealing with her bodyguards, we stole her drip, then also stole the rest of her shit, kidnapped her and made our exit. Mission successful, but in the classic slipping style, every success must come with its failure. Ironically, I misplaced the footage for this bit, but I tried to recreate it the best I could. So, what happened? Well, we got into a fight with some bandits straight after leaving the base, and somehow dropped a wren. Maybe I accidentally put her down, maybe the arm of whoever was carrying her got injured, I don't know. But I only noticed 10 minutes after the fight, and only just managed to find her after returning to where we had it. A minute or two later and she would have died from her wounds. Naturally, I decided to give her back her drip so we could spot her easily. I would have liked this to be the end of our problems with her, but of course, it wasn't. I'll be completely honest with you, I forgot to feed her. Ren was not a big fan of this and decided to die in protest. This wasn't ideal, but at least now we were a step closer to starving out heft. Next, we headed back to the fort, where we hopped straight onto the home computer to post a Craigslist ad, asking for help recruiting a new army, and got a message from J Johannes, Johannes Gutters, Guttenberg, who told us about his new printing press technique. By the next morning, he arrived and helped us get our printing press set up. Within a few hours, we were rolling, printing and putting up recruitment posters across some of the main cities in the map. And now, we wait. But in the meantime, I sent Gorilla Gordon out to personally recruit some squad members. I headed down to Clownsteady, where I found Jeep, Susano, 
Gringle and Egg, who were all eager to sign up for eight years of service in my army in exchange for an annual salary of 20k cats, plus their very own house. Spoiler alert, they're getting neither of these things. And good luck trying to deal with Gorilla Gordon's legal team. Welcome to Slavery Chumps. With the wool thoroughly pulled tight over my new friend's eyes, we set off back home. Since I was so close to the slave camp where Kleenex was being held, I did consider saving him. But then, I decided I didn't want to. He's been in there long enough, he can deal with it a little while longer. So while Kleenex dug into his usual gruel, we stopped at Burger King before heading home. But clearly, spending the last of our loose change at Burger King wasn't a good idea, as what should have been an easy trip back home was ruined, as the United City's slave hunters started giving my newly made friends shit for being poor. Pretty easy fight for the resident Chad of the group, Gorilla Gordon, but the rest weren't so lucky, as the attack left them on the brink of death. We found a local bar to rest up in and headed back, passing through Flats Lagoon on the way back to get more food. Here I ran into a United Cities diplomat who promised to smooth out our relationship in exchange for some reparations for the Battle of Heft. Ah, I'm sorry mate. Yeah, chuckle nuts. We shook hands, made the trade and left the bar. The pieces were now moving into place. And sure enough, as we carried on past the lagoon and over the hill, we were met by the sight of hundreds and hundreds of new recruits, all pouring in from all over the map directly into the base. So I'll be honest with you, around 80% of the time I actually spent playing and recording footage for Kenshi in the last three months was dedicated to building this army. I have been so hopped up on Adderall for these past few months, slaving away, grinding, all to grow my army. I just wanted to explain why this video took so long to make, so hopefully you guys don't hate me. But it was definitely worth it to build our army. Just look at some of the freaks, gremlins and chads now in our rank. Personally, I think this guy is pretty cool. And the only downside was that with our numbers abruptly and drastically increased, we were in urgent need of food, stat. And in an effort to avoid repeating history, we began our farming simulator speedrun and blitzed making a ton of new farms. While our wheat grew, our top scientists worked on developing new technology. With our new, we were able to create bigger, thicker, juicier food. Specifically, dust witches, which require bread and to make. If you don't know how food works in Kenshi, essentially characters have a hunger bar, which can lead to weight loss, decreased strength, and passing out when it gets too low. For context, bread, which we had been relying on up to this point, gave only 30 nutrition points. Now, with the ability to make dust witches, the nutrition points had increased to 70. With no space left in the bakery, we set up new food production in the base's weather spoons. All that was left to do now was officially crown the base with its new title, decided by the top comment on the last video by Dank Bandit, who said the base should be called definitely not a drug den, or Fort Dnad for short. Congratulations for getting the most liked comment, and I've definitely got to say, what a great name for throwing the UC and Holy Nation off our trail. We've even got a sign now. Our preparations were almost in place. There were only two more tasks to complete. Number one, break into Slave Master Wader's house and permanently end his existence. And number two, beat up and capture the local wildlife at gut. And so we inserted the obedience ensuring explosive chips into our new recruit's heads and left the base. Kill me later. Despite bringing a lot of food, my group burned through it like my dad burns through packs of cigarettes. <laughs> And so we were forced to stop back at the old base. With my old army beginning to drop like flies, I sent Molly off to get some food, while we tried to beat my old farming simulator record, and had the local Greg stocked with dust witches in no time. With my group energised by high quality British grub, I travelled back out to the port south on the hunt for Slave Master Wader. Meanwhile, out in gut, my Hiver squad was hard at work, pissing off Greenpeace by forcibly recruiting some beak things to our side. However, some of our pathetic stick insect f***s were brutalised, and we had to haul them back out of gut, Hacksaw Ridge style. Back at Port South, however, things were going a bit better, as Gorilla Gordon was busy destabilizing an innocent town by beating up and stealing their only leader, Slave Master Wader. Yeah, can you not break it to my home please, mate? This is private residence. Can you go? Oh my god, please get out of the private residence, please. <laughs> Why are you running? Why 
are you running? <laughs> Get over here! He dumped his body in a pool of acid. Michael! Don't leave me here! My house! My God! And with Wada and Ren now out of the picture, I felt a sense of righteous pride knowing that multiple towns were now starving due to my actions, most importantly Heft, which had now fallen into a state of malnutrition. And finally, now with the pieces all in place, we were back at Heft for yet another trolling attempt. I set my hivers on the east side, and on the west side I tried to organise my troops into groups to make it look all cool and cinematic, but like ants hopped up on pheromones, every time an enemy came near, the horde would envelop them and mess up my art of war tier military strategy. So ultimately, I said fuck it, gave up, and as my hivers took position inside the base, I threw everything else I had right at the main gate. On one side, hungry beak things fought hungrier samurais, and on the other, Heft's dwindling defense faced off against a tidal wave of psychopaths. They didn't stand a chance. With the battle drawing to a close, I sent Molly in to do an epic hashtag girlboss walk up to the main tower. And with Tengu dethroned, I finally took the throne and enjoyed a long-awaited victory. So there we have it. The most prosperous economic power on the map thoroughly crippled, the local fauna maimed, multiple beloved figures dead, and a slew of working class individuals scammed into years of servitude. Things could only get better. As my squad swarmed Tengu's tower, I sat knowing that the good times were just beginning and nothing could possibly go wrong. So, it's finally come to this. Katu Bata Nikto Wingshe or Wingshe, rise. Almighty Chrome Leaf, rise. Love the Kenshi vids, but I have an important question, are there more doors or wheels? Let me think about this for a sec. <laughs> I've got it. Wheels. Hey, just wanted to say I've been watching you for a while, and really enjoy your vids. Oh love your Kenshi vids, but also excited to watch you break out and approach other games as well. What was the realization like that you were developing an audience? How did that impact the way you approach making bits, compared to at the beginning of your journey? Thanks Hamza, I appreciate the support. And to answer your question, I don't really feel like there has been a point yet where I've realized I'm developing an audience. Um, even coming up to 10k, it still feels so hard for me to visualize that number into an actual room full of people. If I'm completely honest, I just feel more in disbelief than anything that people actually like my videos and care enough about them to watch and subscribe. It's just an amazing feeling um, having so many people that leave nice comments and really appreciate the channel. But there hasn't been a set point yet where I really felt like I was developing a 
audience. It's kind of been more of like a steady drip feed as I've been growing. And honestly, it hasn't really affected the way I make videos. I've always tried to tailor my videos based on uh, feedback. But now I suppose there's just more comments, which means more feedback. So it lets me improve faster. When did can say click for you? If you like many people start out dying constantly and maybe becoming frustrated before having that one specific play doh or moment that gets you hooked on the game for weeks on end. What was your Kenzie moment? As always, hope you're doing well. Looking forward to everything you're working on man. Thanks Kairos, I hope you're doing well too. And the first time I played Kenshi, I started out as a slave. So I spent the first 10 or so hours of my playthrough having no clue how to escape. I would make a bit of progress and then just get captured again. So I got bored with the game, honestly, pretty quickly. But it's not until a few months later when I gave Kenshi a second chance and realized that the brutality of the game was the whole appeal. And then I basically had a moment of So after doing a bit of research and actually learning how to level up and advance, I got more of an idea of how to play the game, and it really started to click for me. Hypothetically, if your manhood were any item in Kenshi, what would it be? 14. <clears throat> Next question. Bread? Bread. Bread? Bread. Is your face bread? Yes. Bread? Bread. Do you like crazy? No. What inspired you to start making unedited videos to begin with? Is there anyone that's had a large influence on your style? I feel like there's a really lengthy answer to this question, but to keep it short, I'd say the four main YouTubers who influenced my style were I Hate Everything, Internet Historian, Marto Cito Pants, and Germa985. Uh, particularly the last two. In terms of the style of my videos, it's definitely most inspired by Martin Cito Pants, but in terms of what I want to actually bring to the channel and the kind of attitude I want to have, I feel so inspired by Germa. It's something I maybe even want to make a full video about at some point, but way back in 2011 when Germa used to make videos on general life advice and uh, self-improvement tips, I found myself seeing a lot of value in them and honestly some of the advice he gave in those videos has really changed my life for the better. And to me German's always been such a positive, inspiring person, that's something I really want to kind of replicate. Even if it's just entertaining people, I want to make you guys feel happy and entertained when you're watching my videos and feel like I'm adding something to your life. Now, if I'm honest, I don't really know how I'm gonna incorporate that into my channel yet, but I feel like it's something I definitely want to get around to at some point. Those videos had such a massive effect on my life and I'm so grateful for how they actually impacted me. So if there's one goal I have with the channel, it's to kind of replicate that and just help at least a few people add something to their life that feels worthwhile and feels like it's helping them out. Even if that's just entertainment or a laugh, it doesn't matter. I just want to keep doing what I'm doing and share a positive influence. Also, as a last thing I really wanted to mention, we are coming up to 10K now. And although we're not quite there yet, I do want to say a massive, massive thank you to everyone for getting me to this point. There have been so many amazing people who have commented on my videos saying some really positive things. And at times, some of these comments have really kept me going. And not only that, but there's been some great people on the Discord, Twitter, the impact it's had on my life has just been huge and I'm really, really looking forward to sharing some more videos with you guys soon. So once again, thank you. And just a final update on the schedule. I know it has been a very long time since the last video and especially since the last Kenshi video. Hopefully this is gonna change in the future. I have just been very busy with my personal life recently, but going forwards, I'm gonna be dedicating more time and effort to the channel. So expect to see probably not super regular uploads, but definitely more regular than they have been. Once again, a big thank you 
and I'll see you guys soon.